Hey, what's up, Integrity Fam? We're back with our Hackademy sessions. And in today's episode, we're going to have a look at how to circumvent CSERF or cross-site request forgery controls. And yeah, let's jump straight into our lab over here. And this is once again provided by Portswigger. Thank you very much for that. And what we're going to do over here is we're checking that Burb is active. We're having that running in the back and we're going to log in to our attacker. The attacker is called Wiener. We do see that he has an account. His name is Wiener and he has an email address. And at the same time, we need a victim, right? So we're also going to log in into our victim account. And our victim is called Carlos over here. And it's looking the same way for Carlos. He's having a name and an email address. And now goal of today is we want to change Carlos's email address from the attacker. And let's see what we can do. So we're going back to the attacker because that's the view that you are able to see as an attacker. And we just say, hey, let's try to change our email address. We're going to intercept this request in Burp Suite to learn about it. And if we do that, we do see that it has two parameters in the post request, one of them being the new email address. And this is new compared to the previous video that I'm going to link above. Now we also have a CSERF token. And we're going to learn for starters what this token is doing. So let's have a look. First of all, we're going to forward this message the way it is. And we do see that the email address was changed. So that worked. And now we got to figure out what this token is doing if we manipulate it. So we're going ahead and say, let's try something else. We're using a different email address and we're going to remove one character from that CSERF token. And we're going to forward this again to the application and see what it's doing. And we do see that it says invalid CSERF token. So what we have learned is that the token is important. It has to be correct. We cannot manipulate it. So there is no way we can craft a token with which we can lure a victim into basically falling for this attack. But let's quickly learn where this token is coming from. And if you reload the page, this is once again from the attacker's perspective, we scroll down the server response and we do see a hidden input field with a CSERF token. So this is where the token is coming from. It's usually being sent to the user of an application if you load a um, certain page where you have some input form or whatever, where it is needed to have some CSERF protection. And what we do see over here is the session cookie of the attacker. And you would think that the token is bound to this session cookie. But if this is really the case, we're going to find out right now. And this is also what we're going to try to do. So let's try to change Carlos's email address. And what you can imagine is if Carlos is doing that, he also has a CSERF token. But in this case, it's the actual CSERF token of Carlos, the one he got when he loaded the page. But what happens right now if we use the attacker CSERF token and I was saying this just a second ago, this should be tied to the user session. But what happens if we exchange Carlos' CSERF token with Wiener's CSERF token, so the attacker's CSERF token? We're going to forward this to the application, and we do see that the email address was changed. So at this point, we actually already found the vulnerability. The vulnerability here is that Although the application needs a CSERF token to process the request, it doesn't check whose it is. It doesn't care at all if it's Carlos's or Wiener's or anybody else's. And that is an issue because with that, we can run a CSERF attack again and we're going to use our CSERF proc. Once again, I've taught you already a little more about this in the previous video, which I'm going to link, but we're going to do this one more time. So we generate a CSERF POC using um, Burp CSERF POC generator. But there's also alternative tools if you're not using Burp Suite Pro. And we're going to copy the HTML and the lab has an exploit server, which kind of acts like the 
attack this web server. And we can just say, okay, let's store our payload over here. What we do need is a new CSIF token. So we're going to the attackers page. We're going to reload it. We're going back, same what we've been doing before. We're going to collect a new token. Because once you use a CSIF token, it's getting invalidated. So you want to make sure you get a new token that hasn't been used before. So this is one that comes from the attacker right now. And we're going to change the email value saying winner own Carlos. Because it's kind of cool if you tell your victim immediately that you kind of did a good job over here. So we're going to store this and we're going to deliver this exploit right now to our victim. And you would usually do this, for example, with a phishing email saying, hey, Carlos, um, thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. Please click on this link and there's something nice waiting for you over here. And then Carlos actually goes ahead, he falls for that link and he gets his email address changed. And with that, we have successfully solved the lab. All right, as usual, I want to quickly reiterate what's going on here. So with cross-site request forgery, it's always important that you have some sort of protection in place by the application so that an attacker cannot just simply change or make you as the victim change values that the attacker wants to have changed. So a smart thing to do would be to include a CSERF token. And what we have seen is that the application was checking that a CSERF token was used that was issued by the application. We tried to delete some characters, we sent it to the server, but it didn't work out. What the application was not doing though, it was not tying the CSERF token to the session. So me as an attacker, I can just log in, create a token or get a token from the server and just use that once again to trick the victim. And then we have set up our attacker's web server, in this case, the exploit server in the lab. We have copied or we've created a CSERF proof of concept, and then we made the victim visit our website. And then he fell for it and he had his email address changed. All right, I hope I make this a little clearer for you. If not, drop some comments down below. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, please give this video a like and subscribe over here in the top right corner. I appreciate you folks watching and I will talk to you soon.